Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I've got a guide for getting back into Battlefield 3 in 2021. Battlefield 3 was an industry-defining game and is fondly remembered by many players as one of the best in the franchise. You can get the game today for next to nothing and many people have been able to get it for free. So it's definitely worth checking out, but getting it booted up and finding a server isn't quite as easy as you might hope. Today's video will go over all the basics of getting started, some cool new mod tools, and some decent loadouts that you'll probably want to try out. So first things first, what's the best way to get into Battlefield 3? What platforms are best for it? Does it support next gen consoles? Is it on sale? Let's talk about that. The good news is Battlefield 3 is easy to get for cheap. Steam and Origin routinely offer it at a reduced price and EA subscription services include all of the Battlefield titles. So if you're a PC player, diving in as a new player is both straightforward and very affordable. Things are a bit different on console though. On console, Battlefield 3 originally launched on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. These versions of the games had reduced player counts, smaller map size, cut modes, and other limitations like low resolutions and frame rates. So they were pretty far from the ideal experience. And unfortunately, even on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, Battlefield 3 is an inferior experience to the PC version. Now the Series X does feature 4K output, a higher frame rate, and auto HDR support with the PlayStation 5 offering similar features, but on closer inspection it still looks like Battlefield 3 is rendered at a sub-native resolution, regardless of what next-gen console you use. All of the original limitations like lower player count and smaller levels are still there as well. So if you already own the game for last-gen consoles, it's certainly an improvement, but otherwise definitely go with the PC version. Now as for how the PC version runs, I think the best word to describe it would be butter. Battlefield 3 on modern hardware runs like a dream regardless of what resolution you play at. Even on something as old as a GTX 970, it still runs quite smooth. If you don't have the latest and greatest hardware, Battlefield 3 offers fantastic presentation at 1080p and above. Now a lot of this guide is going to include some PC specific stuff, but all of the tactics, weapon suggestions, and actual gameplay stuff will apply to basically any platform. Now getting into a Battlefield 3 multiplayer match, one important thing to look for is spoofed player counts. Battlefield 3 relies on battle log for matchmaking. Over the years, cheaters and admins have figured out how to falsify player counts you see when using the server browser. Even if you use the quick match options, it seems like the game thinks the spoofed counts are real. And the solution is pretty simple. You just install a browser plugin that reveals the actual player count of all the servers. It doesn't fix the quick match options and you still have to do some manual sorting to find a legit server, but these plugins are pretty much essential. I'll leave a link to download them in the video description. There's also some technical limitations to keep in mind. Battlefield 3 servers run at 30 hertz, but the client send rate is only 10 hertz. And while 30 hertz is pretty playable, 60 hertz is kind of the modern norm, and well, 10 hertz just isn't fast enough to keep up with close quarter combat. Today, that means a lot of dying around corners, missing shots you thought hit, and close quarter gunfights that can feel wildly inconsistent. It's not an awful experience or anything, but if you're very used to 60 hertz gameplay on modern modern FPS shooters, well, you might notice the difference. As for the actual gameplay, the weapons and vehicles are reasonably well balanced, but there's plenty of tactics and minor exploits players have discovered over the years that are a bit overpowered. Taking helicopters out of range of infantry players and using them as a mobile spawn point leads to, well, an endless onslaught of enemy players on key objectives. The explosive spam can get absolutely bonkers on any map with tight choke points, and well, prepare to die a lot to vehicles as they are incredibly fast and pack some serious munitions. Oh, and then of course there is suppression. Dice please. Battlefield 3 suppression system is insane if you're not used to it. Getting shot at by basically any weapon instantly tanks your accuracy and blurs your screen. It's one of those mechanics that makes sense from a Hollywood spectacle perspective, but its impact on the gameplay is so frustrating. Not being able to return accurate fire on somebody who missed their shots feels like an unnecessary penalty that you're forced to suffer to make worse players feel better. The good news is, when it comes to playing Battlefield 3 today, there are some incredible tools out there that improve on pretty much every aspect of the experience. The Venice Unleashed mod client for Battlefield 3 recently went live and it offers some great features. High tick rate servers, no blue filter, and most importantly, no suppression. Plus there's other features like 100 player servers, custom modes, and more. On top of that, there are some big mods on the way, like a Project Reality mod, aka Squad Total Conversion. 
For the here and now, I think Venice Unleashed is probably the best way to return to Battlefield 3 if you're a veteran player. Though I will say the improved tick rate and boosted player counts do seem more like gimmicks than valuable features. Battlefield 3 was built on the technology of its time and pushing it beyond that just doesn't seem to do all that much good. But the servers are running pretty standard rule sets and I will say the quality of the servers are solid even compared to the more popular third party server providers out there. Many of the standard servers that you would find outside of Venice Unleashed would be running Metro 24 seven or have weird hardcore rules or tons of instant vehicle spawn. But despite being a mod client, Venice Unleashed servers typically run with vanilla rules with stuff like suppression turned off. As for getting Venice Unleashed up and running, the process is pretty straightforward. Just download their client installer from their website, sign in with your origin ID, and you'll be good to go. The only catch is that the population of players using Venice Unleashed is a lot lower, making the matchmaking much slower. So at off-peak hours, you might struggle to actually find populated servers in all regions. That said, with big mods on the way, I expect Venice Unleashed will only get more popular over time. Now, if this is your first time diving into Battlefield 3, I do have some advice for weapon loadouts and classes you can use to get started. The Assault class, aka the Medic, is probably the easiest and best starting class. You get Assault Rifles, which are some of the best weapons in the game, and the role of the Medic is extremely straightforward. Heal your teammates with med bags and revive them with defibrillators. That's about all you have to do to play a Medic effectively. Engineer and Recon players have a lot more nuance to their roles, and support is basically basically a bullet factory for your teammates, and it has some insane weapons. If you decide to start with the Assault class, the M416, the M16A3, and the AEK971 are probably the best weapons for the class. Now it is practically a meme just how much I love the M16A3 at this point, and I don't think you can go wrong with it. It works close quarters, long range, and everywhere in between. It's also the gun you start with as an Assault player. Later unlocks like the F2000 and the G3A3 can be a ton of fun, but they do require a little bit more experience to master. One pro tip I'll give you is that Battlefield 3's gunplay is all about bursting. Don't just hold down left click and hope you hit your target. Shoot in quick bursts of 3-5 to five shots at further ranges. That maintains your accuracy and makes it more likely that you'll actually hit your targets and take them down quicker. Now when it comes to weapon attachments, this is an area that DICE just took a one-size-fits-all approach. The red dot, heavy barrel, and foregrip are pretty much the only attachments worth using on the majority of weapons. If you need a little more zoom, the holographic sight adds a 1.5 magnification. Beyond that level of zoom though, most weapons are going to get real hard to use, so I don't recommend going beyond that. The heavy barrel gives you better ADS accuracy, reduced bullet drop, and increases your damage over range. Combined with the foregrip makes a deadly attachment that gives you a significant advantage. As for the other classes, the M4 for engineers, the M249 for support, and the M98B for recon are some of the best weapons you'll find. Like with the Assault class, these weapons except for the M98B are unlocked either from the start or very early on in class progression. As for starting with the Recon class, the SV98 is a great bolt action rifle and offers some of the best hip fire in the game. What makes the M98B so great in the long run is that it has the highest bullet velocity of any sniper rifle, making moving shots and distant shots much easier. Now if you're in a hurry, you can buy the game's shortcut kits or just join one of the many 24-7 Metro inflated XP servers that will likely get you entire class unlocks in an evening. When it comes to hyper specific class mechanics, they are a bit beyond this video scope, but my advice is to use your class's gadgets as much as possible. If you have an ammo crate, make sure to place it down when you're around teammates to resupply their ammo. The support C4 gadget is the most effective anti-tank weapon in the game. Don't be afraid to sacrifice yourself while using it, just make sure you get at least three C4s on the tank before pulling the trigger to make sure that you get a one hit kill. As a recon, your respawn beacon and motion sensors are invaluable for providing squad spawns and detecting enemies. And engineers will make short work of vehicles with their wide variety of rocket launchers. But you'll want to aim for the back of vehicles whenever possible and try to land a shot as straight on as possible. Anything else will deal slightly less damage. When it comes to leveling up vehicles, well, this is one area of Battlefield 3 that can be a bit of a grind. The best weapon upgrades for them are buried at the end of the unlock progression, so you're going to be a bit squishy and outgunned when compared to other vehicle users. If you want to get into vehicle combat, my advice is to do it from a distance. That's a good general rule of thumb, even for veteran players. If you get surrounded by engineers or support players, well, you're going to get taken out very quickly. 
The vehicles in Battlefield 3 are extremely maneuverable, so yeeting out of a bad situation is totally doable, but that does require decent map knowledge and driving skills. When you're first starting out, use the vehicles to learn flanking routes and the layouts of maps. Stay at medium range so you're just beyond striking distance of infantry players. And make sure you're not driving headfirst into a fight you can't win. And if you have a gunner or squad riding with you, you can let them focus on infantry while you fight other vehicles. Now my final bit of advice for Battlefield 3 tactics comes to the modes. Conquest, Team Deathmatch, and Rush are probably the only modes you're going to find populated servers for. Conquest is like large-scale domination, the more flags your team holds, the better. Spawn trapping is a big aspect of Battlefield 3, so if you can help your team lock down the flags closest to the enemy spawn, well, you're going to gain a huge advantage for your team. Just don't neglect the more central objectives. When one flag falls, teams will often try flooding a more central objective like a Trojan horse attack. You should spend your time transitioning between the most contested objectives and defend them until it seems like the enemy team has moved on. Rush is a little more nuanced. In this mode, you have to defend multiple sets of MCOMs. If the enemy team blows up two MCOMs in one sector, the map opens up to the next sector. If they detonate the final two MCOMs in your base, well, you lose. On defense, it's pretty straightforward. Hold the line of four defense for as long as possible. Recon players play a big role in defending MCOMs with their spawn beacon. Never place a beacon behind the line of defense, and if you put the beacon outside, you will parachute down, giving you a massive advantage against attackers and options to land on top of areas that would otherwise be inaccessible. As for attacking, well, your biggest asset is vehicles. Using helicopters as both a means to attack and a mobile spawn point is the best way to break through enemy defenses. Tanks are also great for flushing out an objective and holding the defenders back once you get a bomb planted. Team Deathmatch is, well, it's Team Deathmatch. Get kills, try not to die, and notice that the spawns will rotate as you push from one side of the map to the other. Being aware of these spawn shifts can give you a pretty big advantage. So overall, would I recommend playing Battlefield 3 in 2021 over, say, Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1? Well, it's definitely got a nostalgia appeal, and if you've never played it before, it does hold a historical significance in the franchise. The game also has some of the best map design in the franchise, which frankly we haven't seen since. I've got a lot of fond memories of Battlefield 3 from its heyday, but the game has certainly started to show its age in some regards. Venice Unleashed though could bring a bright future for the game, but none of its highly anticipated mods are playable just yet. It's entirely possible we'll see some awesome Battlefield 3 mods in 2021 that will revive the game in significant ways. The engine is still very powerful and incredibly well optimized, but more modern games already offer the complete experience as well. Again, you should be able to pick up Battlefield 3 for next to nothing these days thanks to sales and discounts. Give it a shot if you've never played it before. Just know that it is one of the most impressive games of its time, but it does show its age in some ways, although it still looks miles ahead of most other games that came out in 2011. And that wraps it up for this guide today. What are your thoughts? Do you think Venice Unleashed could kickstart a Battlefield 3 revival? Are you still playing Battlefield 3 after all these years? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe if you like this video. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.